from the Daily Beast, everyone who's lost their job during the racism reckoning of 2020. And of course, this isn't an exhaustive list. They, there couldn't be. And, you know, I'm thinking of the, the Me Too reckoning as well. You know, how many people lost their jobs because, oh, well, no, standards are higher now. If you don't bow down to the politically correct line of the Me Too movement in every way, you might lose your job, even if you're not sexist, even if you're not a predator. And it's the same thing now. If you're not appropriately sensitive, you might just lose your job. And I've actually been following this, and I'm kind of glad that it came out with this story from the Daily Beast, because I saw this first a few days ago. If you mind skipping ahead there, CJ, to Forbes.com, Reebok and athletes cut ties with CrossFit over founder Greg Glassman's George Floyd tweet. And I'm like, whoa, wait, <laughs> what? Now, first bigger cancel culture issue here right well you were if there's outrage we're just going to disassociate and it's i'm all for this as a mechanism and the development of this the expectation of people saying we don't like what you're doing we're going to peacefully disassociate is a huge improvement over let's get daddy trump and big government to come in and put these people in, in the place that we want them and of course then what happens is we all end up in the place that government wants us, which is where its corporate sponsors want us. And I, so I looked at this tweet and I'm like, wait, what was the tweet itself? And they linked to it and it's like, it was two words. Go, go, uh, the, the prior link there, if you would, CJ, is the tweet itself. So to, the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation tweeted, racism and discrimination are critical public health issues that demand an urgent response. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Read our director statement, health data. Can you pull this one up, CJ? It's the Twitter.com link directly to that tweet. And it's and, and then the graphic associated with it there is racism is a public health issue. And right underneath it, you see the response from Greg, Greg Glassman. And it's just, it's Floyd 19. And you're like, wait, well, wait, that's, that's all he said. Now, I'm I'm a, like, is it is it insensitive? Like, not even. Is it like, I guess for people who have have, have, have take these names of, of every victim of police brutality as as something sacred. Um, okay, it's slightly inoffensive to the hyper politically correct crowd. Screw them. But what's the point that Greg is making here? Saying it's Floyd nineteen. Now, his follow-up tweet is, your failed model quarantined us, and now you're going to model a solution to racism? George Floyd's brutal murder sparked riots nationally. Quarantine alone is, quote, accompanied in every age and under all political regimes by an undercurrent of suspicion, distrust, and riots. Thanks. Now, not the clearest communication, but, again, he's challenging the authority, saying, like, well, you, you, your, your COVID response failed. Why should we trust you with the response to, to George Floyd? That's the comparison he's making. Like I, when I read him saying it's Floyd 19, I mean, because I know that the coronavirus is a hoax. Not that it's not real, but obviously everything around it, the manipulation, the blowing up of the threat. Yeah, there, it's a hoax. And, you know, when he says it's, it's Floyd 19, he's, what he's pointing out is that the George Floyd protest, that all of this right now is, is, is similarly a hoax. Now, here's the thing. You know, Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation puts this out and says, you know, racism is a public health issue. Maybe, maybe Greg Glassman knows something else. That there's someone behind this. That some, but he probably also knows that this is a fabricated crisis. Why is it happening now? Why did it happen with Eric Garner? Is it just because? Well, everybody's all you know sensitive because of because of Corona and feeling shut in and eager to protest. No, it's because the mainstream media made this a story and has been promoting this and encouraging it. So for him to point out that there's a parallel, totally legitimate. Here's where it's really insensitive. And here's the, the worst thing I can really say about his tweet and, and what it's in response to. It's like, 
again, and I made the point about Corona, I'll make the same point about George Floyd. Just because people shouldn't be worked up about this right now doesn't mean that they're not worked up about it right now and that you should be sensitive to the fact that they're worked up about it right now. And you don't yell at someone who's afraid because government made them afraid of Corona. You dumb sheeple, how dare you put on a mask and then bully me into social distancing? You asshole. No, like this person is scared. Like, Hey, man. Look, they're lying to you. Calm down. This is not something to get worked up about. Let's have our cool, calm, collected, reasonable adult conversation. And hopefully you can put the thing they're trying to get you to be afraid of in perspective. And, you know, you can not allow yourself to be manipulated and learn from it. And next time, be more like me and less like all these other followers who are going along with you know, their own oppression by mind into the fear. You see how that's like a, a, a way better response, right? Someone comes to you in this context, goes, oh my gosh, George Floyd, it's time to be worked up. Black Lives Matter. I want to do something about this now. And you go, <laughs> right now? <laughs> this is bullshit. You're an asshole. You might be correct, but you're an asshole. Now, to the bigger cancel culture thing here. Did someone point this out to Reebok? You know, and again, back to the Forbes story. Reebok has led the charge of brands and athletes cutting ties with fitness firm CrossFit after founder and CEO Greg Glassman controversially tweeted it's Floyd 19 in response to a tweet about racism being a public health issue. And like I said, when I read this, I'm like, wait, wait, where, where's the tweet? And I see it's Floyd 19. I'm like, uh, where's the rest of the tweet? What, what else? That was it? That was it. You guys are two words. Making kind of an abstract point. And you guys are freaking out over this? He's not. There's so many more offensive things that white people have said in reaction to George Floyd and BLM becoming a big thing again than this. Way more offensive. So was there some outrage in cancel culture? Yes, absolutely. But here's what I want to point out and, and getting back to the bigger story. You know, and, and let, well, for, but first, let, let's check in with Axios again here because CrossFit, uh, prior article there, link for, for you, CJ, from Axios.com, CrossFit faces mass exodus after CEO's controversial George Floyd tweet. Now, I kind of want to like de-emphasize the inflammatory headline, mass exodus. Hello, CrossFit gyms have been shut down for the last few months anyway because of Corona. This was a business, I don't want to say on the ropes. I don't know if, how much, you know, because CrossFit is a national brand that licenses that style and, and, and certifies trainers to, to, to oversee CrossFit classes and they get a cut. You know, are, 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 are gyms like still having to pay their dues to crossfit national while they're shut down and not allowed to make money off of that could it be that they're going wait a second why are we paying for this brand and in a lot of the discussions i've seen in the you know the crossfit community and the fitness community around this story like we still love the crossfit training concept you know, this got me thinking here, like, I'm not a CrossFitter. I'm too lazy. I like to lift weights, <laughs> you know? And then it's like, well, I guess when I'm, when I'm doing field work and construction, the way I do it out here at the garden, that, that's my CrossFit. I love it. I work till I get winded and, you know, out of breath and take breaks. And anyway, I, so they're saying like, we're not abandoning the model, but we don't want to pay for this brand anymore. What are we getting out of this brand? You know, or can we, can we separate the brand from the company and not pay for it? Do we make it an open source thing? And, and call it something else. So it's kind of cool to watch the... Re so like in a sense, I'm for this. Uh, getting away from CrossFit in terms of economic efficiency. Do we need a national brand that every gym is paying a cut to? Or could we could, could CrossFit have started instead as a an open source community thing? Could, could this guy, Greg, instead of launch, could he have just hosted... And he would have made a lot less money in the short run, but he would have created something more valuable for humanity possibly that he wouldn't lose because it looks like now he's going to lose his business. Right. And he could have, like, if it wasn't for this bullshit happening now, perhaps he could have transitioned. Perhaps he could have adapted. Perhaps he could have created the CrossFit council because there's the CrossFit games. And like, this is a huge business now, you know, good for him for creating something 
that enough gym owners saw value in there being that national brand for. But your national brand could have been better. It could have been more valuable as a little more of an open source thing. And saying, I don't own the CrossFit brand. I own CrossFit.com. And here we have a community. And I'm just a manager of this site. And I get paid ads and commission. And I charge gyms, you know, premium to have ads and membership and be on my email list and blah, blah, blah. But you could have gone one less level, you know, taking advantage of intellectual property and corporatism as the general paradigm. And you would have had not only a more efficient, more sustainable model, but it also would not have been prone to this kind of cancel culture bullshit that, that, that the CEO is facing now. So I'm against the way that it's happening, the reasons that it's happening. I'm for this, the, the, the transition and efficiency because it leads to you know, greater efficiency in the fitness industry as a whole. And in this episode, the, the, the thing that I wanted to point out more importantly than anything else was that there's this undercurrent of desperation right why are these gyms so eager to be like screw greg and crossfit national or international screw the the, the the business we can do this ourselves for them the the tweet is kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back or the the, the breaking point or maybe more more accurately the excuse the stimulus the spark for them to go this brand thing, we're not getting what we're paying for. And now with the additional cost of having to defend the, you know, Greg's racist tweet comment. All right, maybe, maybe we're out of here. And so we go back to the story from the Daily Beast. In the days after George Floyd's tragic death, protests erupted in over 350 American cities. The National Guard was deployed to 23 states and more than 14 metro areas implemented curfews. For more than two weeks, protesters have taken to the streets, sometimes several times per day, demanding justice for Floyd's family, police defunding, and a comprehensive reimagination of public safety. But as the civil unrest played out in public, it has also migrated into the workforce. In the past 15 days, Workers at media institutions, sports franchises, TV shows, and food chains, as well as online critics, have forced companies and corporations to confront charges of racism, overhaul their hiring practices, and interrogate out places from the New York Times and CrossFit to the grocery store Holy Land might find ways for reform. More than once, this has led to oustings and resignations. So here are all of them so far, and I'm like they're way more love less noteworthy quality that are not included in this list but number one greg glassman founder ceo of crossfit obviously we covered that next wendy melcy host of the weekly with wendy melcy on the canadian broadcasting corporation in preparation for an episode on black lives matter and racism coverage in the media mesley used a word that should never be used in a statement given to the podcast canada land mesley elaborated in the context of an editorial discussion about current issues regarding race i used a word that should never be used. It was not aimed at anyone. I was quoting a journalist we were intending to interview on a panel discussion about coverage of racial inequality. Can you guess what the word was? A CBC spokesperson told Canada Land that Mesley had been removed from her position pending an investigation. She apologized to her coworkers immediately, adding, quote, I was careless with my language and wrong to say it regardless of my intention. I hurt people, and for that I'm very sorry. I'm also deeply ashamed. Do you fire someone because they occasionally have a slip of the tongue that is not in line with their general pattern or their intent even in that communication? How ridiculous is, is this sensitivity now? Like, this is, this is not, you know, a, appropriate cancel culture. This is cancel culture out of control. Adam Rappaport, editor-in-chief, Bon Appetit, because he, and, and again, this one, uh, because he was wearing puerto rican brown face he dressed up as a puerto rican for halloween you know like and you know it wasn't hateful it was like you know it might have been insensitive but like cultural cross-dressing for halloween you know you're gonna do the good and the bad and make fun of stereotypes and i'm, I'm all for uh i hate to mention carlos mencia you know but his kind of racial comedy like you can be, you, we need to be comfortable talking about racial differences 
and being able to laugh at them and say, yeah, there are good things and bad things and things I don't like and things I like about different races. That's not racist. Does it to, to acknowledge that races have differences and that you have preferences that are related to those differences? Like, let's talk about those things. Let's be realistic. Let's do it with love and good humor. And that's one thing I think Carlos Mencia uniquely and someone's going to go, what about this comic? Yeah, hey, you got better comics. Let me know. Uh, but yeah, I think Carlos Mencia like, was, was kind of the biggest comic of recent memory who really embodied positive racial humor. And, and I think it's great. And, and when people just like this, you know, they're totally ridiculous out of context, leads to firing. Uh, next one, Christine Barberich, top editor, co-founder of Refinery29, um, which I'd never heard of. Uh, Vice owned fashion outlet, apparently, uh, as she said, I worked at Refinery29 for less than nine months due to a toxic company culture where uh, where white women's egos ruled the near non-existent editorial processes. One of the founders consistently confused myself and one of our full-time front desk associates and pay disparity was atrocious. atrocious. Um, Hartley Sawyer, actor in The Flash, uh let's see sawyer's twitter account has been deleted so he was making light of racism and sexual assault apparently the only thing making light of you can't you can't make fun of stuff anymore the only thing keeping me from doing mildly racist tweets is the knowledge that al sharpton would never stop complaining about me elsewhere he wrote somewhat incoherently date rape myself so i don't have to masturbate uh you know like is, is am i gonna parse out every one of these is there some you know, anyway, is there some ill intent? Probably. Do I care? No. In regards to Mr. Sawyer's posts on social media, we do not tolerate derogatory remarks that may target any race, ethnicity, national origin, gender, or sexual orientation. So I apologized on Instagram. I am ashamed that I was capable of these really horrible attempts to get attention at that time. I regret them deeply. Person, James Bennett, editorial page editor of the New York Times. This was a really weird one because they ran an opinion piece from a U.S. Senator, Tom Cotton. Now, unless you're challenging the premises of America's electoral system as a whole, uh, we're talking about a U.S. Senator who ostensibly, under the allegedly, under the current system, represents the will of the majority of the voters of his home state and has a vote of one of 100 in the United States Senate. You're not going to give him a repeat, you know, like his, his common practice because it encouraged the use of military force against protesters called send in the troops. Can you disagree with it and still say that a senator, like we can publish it? Yeah. what? But no, this created some whole, like, and, and the thing that bothers me most about this really is the diversion of attention from worthy topics to bullshit sensitivity. Stan Wicknowski, top editor of the Philadelphia Inquirer, um, because they put up building, Buildings Matter too as a, as a headline. And, like, you can't just apologize. Like, there's, you know, read the story. There's no, like, evil intent. They're not saying, you know, black life. Can, can you be insensitive by accident and forgiven? And say, oh, yeah, my bad. I'll learn from that. I'm not going to do that again. I'm still the best person for this job. I'm going to keep doing this. Well, if, if, if we could make that the expectation instead of, well, you can get someone fired if you have a negative tweet storm about them, you know. Alexander Katai, midfielder to the LA Galaxy. Uh, you know, I, and then there's Andrew Alexander, CEO of Second City. Holy Land CEO's daughter, Leanne Wadi, because uh, she was the catering director at Holy Land. You know, and I mean, some of these, like, are, are justified, some are not, and they, 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 they just keep going and going and going. But my bigger point that I want to make in, in light of all of these stories and, you know, cancel culture being kind of out of control is that it's it's really important today in a, in a time of crisis like this, in a time of heightened sensitivities, to be tolerant. And I mean that not just, well, we have to be intolerant against intolerance so that we can have toler. No, like really calm the hell down, like be tolerant. 
be taught like people are people are stressed right now people are desperate be compassionate especially when you're you're looking at, at at cutting ties you know like with crossfit falling apart so rapidly right now why it's because people are desperate financially and i would say that in times like this it's again all the more important that we hang together and increase our tolerance of each other and support for each other in building and maintaining positive community and business relations because if we allow ourselves to be further divided and economically disadvantaged by cutting ties it's going to further suppress the economy and it's going to make it easier for them to divide conquer manipulate exploit so please be very cautious of that don't contribute to cancel culture you know, unless there's with stuff like this, no, they're they're real injustices to address. There are better things to do with your time, but please be very cautious, especially right now, when it comes to being tolerant and maintaining rather than destroying relationships in ways that you're probably going to regret later. <laughs>